All right, guys, I got in the Anthem MRX 740, seven channel AV receiver. I want to show you how to best set this thing up, go through the web interface, talk about the base management, show you measurements. So that way you know how to get the best base out of this system. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Sala with Audioholics, and we are here doing our second video on the Anthem MRX 740. As you can see here, this is the front panel view of this receiver. I love that big display on the front panel. You can basically configure every function you want from the front panel. That's a sign of a good, well thought out product and how to use it, very good usability. Here we have the back panel of this receiver. As you can see, it has a seven channel amplifier, 140 watts times five, 60 watts times two, but it has 11 channels of processing. So you could do a full 7.1.4 system. Before we get into all of that stuff, I wanted to show you the pre-outs here towards the left of the unit. You can see there's two subwoofer outputs, but in reality, it's just a parallel connection. And I did a video on determining whether or not a, a receiver has a parallel subwoofer outputs or if it has two independent ones. Unfortunately, this one is just parallel. So if you want to have independent delay control of your multi-sub system, you're going to need an external box like a mini DSP or equivalent. But anyway, I want to show you guys, you know, just how incredible the configuration is on this receiver. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen with you. And we are going to get down to the brass tacks of this thing. I want to show you guys things that you're not going to find virtually anywhere else online. And I think it's very useful for people that are really serious about getting the most out of this receiver. So once you have your receiver on the network, in this case, I used an Ethernet cable plugged into my uh, network. You could also use Wi-Fi, but I always prefer a physical connection when you can. You pull up the IP address and here you are. It shows you a pictorial representation of the AVR and it has all the different configuration stuff. So obviously this is the network area. It shows you, you know, your IP address, your Wi-Fi, all that stuff. And the serial number it shows you the DSP version, the software build. The first thing I recommend when you buy your new um, Anthem product is to update the firmware, get the latest firmware because there's been a bunch of bugs when it first came out that they've addressed. You definitely want to get the newest firmware that you can. So I'm going to go through all these different um, line items here, all these different bullet points, and just show you what this is all about. We start with the main zone, and here you just have basic you know, input selection mode. You have your balance, your treble and bass controls, your levels here. Uh, interesting thing, um, it has up mixing capability like all Atmos receivers. You could actually set that right here. You could have no up mixing if you're just listening to two channel, or you can do all channel stereo. You could do mono. It's very rare to find an AV receiver that'll let you convert stereo to mono. I think that's really cool. That's a great troubleshooting technique if you want to see what's going on with the phase or anything with your system to put it in mono. Or if you just want to do zone two in mono and you want to just do distributed audio and you don't want to have a left and right channel. Very cool that they do that. Incidentally, this receiver does have a second zone. And of course, they have the... Um, DTSX neural up mixer and they have the Dolby surround up mixer and they have their own Anthem logic and they have a separate music and cinema mode. So I'm interested in checking that out. I know Teo Nicolakis is an Anthem user and he raves about the Anthem up mixer. I'm glad that they still have this on board. Um, it's always great to have extra variety of up mixers. I'm a big fan of the Dolby surround up mixer, as you saw in one of my prior videos. But anyways, you've got three different selections here that you could choose from. And there you go on that. And again, you got your zone two configuration here, and you could control your input, your volume, power on and off, mute, etc. So when we start with the general settings here, this is just the general configuration of the receiver. You could uh, basically set it for the distance in units whether you want to do feet or meters, your master volume scale, 
your HDMI bypass. That means basically if you want to have video go through the receiver when it's turned off so you could still watch TV through your source that you had on and maybe use the TV speakers. That's great that all the modern receivers are offering that these days. And you have here the display, the front panel. You can control the brightness. You have all your different settings here. I think this is awesome that it has that. Your main zone volume, you could set the maximum volume level on the main zone. So that way, if you have someone come over and they just keep cranking it up and you want to have a limit to that, you don't want to be able to have them overdrive the system for whatever reason. And a power up volume, which is very important. Otherwise, you could turn your receiver on and your Apple TV could be playing and you switch to Apple TV and you get blasted with really loud music if you had a party the night before. I like to set mine at like minus 40. That's just my personal preference. And of course, you got your muting, you got your headphone mute outputs, all that stuff, your CEC control, your HDMI control. If you're using a control four or a, a control system like control four or savant, you usually want to turn all these off and, and do that with the control system. So the speaker stuff is pretty cool. You have a pictorial representation up here. I just called mine Audio Hawks. You know, it's it's, it's interesting because Sound United products, the Den and the Morants, uh, within the last couple of generations, they had now have two profile settings that you can have, and they were boasting about how awesome that is, and it is awesome. Check this out. Anthem gives you four profiles. So you could have four different configurations of this receiver. If you have, let's say you have a multi-row theater and you have a particular main listening position, you set that for profile one. Then you have your buddies come over and you still want to tweak out. And you want to have the best performance at that other seat because he took your seat. You go to profile two. Or if you've got, you know, an example where you're running from projection versus a fixed display, depending on the time of the day and the shades go up and down and the lighting conditions of the room change and your, and your acoustics change in the room because you're turning, you're closing out all your windows uh, with curtains or whatever. You can have different calibration settings there. So that's pretty cool that they give you four profiles here. And they give you a pictorial representation of what's going on with your speaker layout. In this case, I'm running one subwoofer, um, a center channel, surrounds, your mains, obviously. Now you can have back channels and you can have mid in ceiling if you want that. Um, this is not, this amplifier only has seven channels built in, so you have to use external amplification. And I set it originally in the channel mapping for just one pair of Atmos channels, because I'm going to set this up in the bedroom of the Audiohawk Smart House, which is a 5.2.2 system. I want to go there real quick just to show you that. So here you have your amp matrixing in the channel mapping. This is basically confront, uh, is basically diverting where those amplifiers are going to go. Now you're gonna see in a separate video I'm gonna do on my measurements of this receiver, it's got a really good preamp output section, one of the best I've seen in an AV receiver. Uh, the amp section, it's okay, but it's not up to the level of some of the other players in this price class. This is almost a $3,000 receiver. So in that case, my recommendation for most people, and this is why this is such an attractive product because it's an 11 channel processor built in with a seven channel amplifier, why not reassign those front channels and the surround channels to maybe your height channels and then get yourself a really good Anthem five channel amp. Then you've got a separate solution for, you know, a much cheaper cost and you only have two boxes instead of three boxes because you then you would have a preamp and two other uh, boxes for external amplification. That's a very compelling case here. So anyways, this is how you do it. I would set in this case, I would set your fronts to height one and then your surrounds to height two. Those are the 140 watt amplifiers. And then the back channels, you could put those to another zone. I don't understand why they have um, front bi amp in that case, because the back channels are, are the, the lower power channels. But I guess you could try it out if you don't need as much power to your highs. Um, but in this case, I would probably do them for another zone. And interesting, you could reassign them for another pair of height channels. I'm not exactly sure how that would work. I guess it would just duplicate that signal. I have not tested that. So here's where you configure your channel mapping for your heights, and you have the various different configurations. You could do front in ceiling, front Dolby, which is the bouncy house speaker, front on wall, middle in ceiling, middle Dolby, middle in ceiling, back Dolby, on wall. I mean, it's just pretty cool. And you could turn it on and off. And when you do that, it shows you pictorially what you've done. 
as you can see here. So very cool that you have all this capability and it changes it and it gives you the updates in this graph over here. So I wanna go back to all my different settings here and um, turn these back on. I guess they were turned off there. Now you see it. Okay, so now you see the back Dolby front end height. So now when we go back to channel mapping, you should be able to see that changing. And there you go, okay. All right, so that's pretty cool. So it just, basically you're getting a pictorial representation of what you're setting up. So you could always check that to make sure it's right. And then here's where you have your distances and your levels. Your distances are in uh, two inch increments and your levels are in half a dB increments here. Now here's something that's that I find um, very unique about this processor or this receiver. Most of the mainstream receivers either give you, um, they give you like a phase plus or minus. Many of the cheaper ones don't even give you that at all. This one actually gives you a frequency crossover like you would normally have, but it gives you the phase in degrees and you could basically tweak that in one degree increments, which is really cool. You usually only get that kind of an, of adjustment on a, on a subwoofer, not into uh, an AV receiver. Or you could just invert here and here. Then you've got your crossover stuff here. You got your low pass fill, your LFE filter. Now I wanna make sure you guys understand LFE filter is different than the subwoofer crossover. That's just for the LFE content. That's when the discrete LFE content comes in, how much bandwidth are you gonna give it going to your subwoofer channel. The uh, LFE bandwidth, for 5.1 and above is 120 hertz. So in most cases, I tell you people just leave it at 120, but then you got your front crossover settings here and you have it in 10 degree, uh, 10 hertz increments. And you have all this basically for each of the channels, you could do that. So I wanna go over the base management with you because a lot of people probably don't understand what this super sub front is. So if you have your front crossover set to off, and let's say you have your other channel set to 80 hertz. So let's hypothetically say you want to have full range speakers, right? If you go and turn super sub front on, what that's going to do now is it's you're still going to have your bass management full range on your main speakers. But your subwoofer is now going to be only crossed over at 40 hertz. And I'll show you the measurement. It defaults at 40 hertz. So this is why I recommend if you're gonna if you want to have two channel audio with your sub engage and your main speaker is large, I recommend setting your crossover here, and then turning super sub front on. If you turn it off and you set your crossover at 80 hertz for your front speakers, your speakers are going to play small, so they're going to block the bass below 80 hertz. But as soon as when you turn super sub front on, and it even tells you full frequency range stereo is fed to the front left right channels and a bass is sent to the subwoofer. In this case, the low frequency information is, is effectively doubled, which may result in unpredicted color low frequency reproduction. The setting is not recommended for accurate sonic reproduction. That's debatable. It really depends on your room, your acoustics, and if you have the ability to adjust with Anthem Arc with manual calibration. But anyway, hypothetically, you wanna have your main speaker set large and you wanna have your subwoofer playing at the same time. You're gonna to wanna to set your crossover here, then turn super sub front on. When you turn super sub front on, it makes your main speakers large again. And now it sets that crossover to whatever you set it for the front crossover for two channel music. So it's a very important point. I think most people will miss if I didn't go over this, and I want to show you the measurements here. I took some measurements I'm going to share with you. So here we have, um, I just set the main speakers to small, and then I set it for 80 hertz crossover. And you can see in the blue trace, that's the high pass filter that goes on the main speakers. The slope is uh, 12 dB per octave at 80 hertz. That's great. But unfortunately, the subwoofer uh, crossover is only 12 dB per octave. I prefer seeing a fourth order or 24 dB per octave slope. I confirmed with Anthem that that is the case, that this is only a second order low pass. They're looking at potentially changing that in the firmware. 
So I will give you an update on that when that happens. But right now, as it stands, you're only getting a second order crossover on your subwoofer output of this processor and AV receiver. And I have to assume that their entire lineup is like that. So I would really recommend people um, to use the 80 hertz crossover. Don't try to set that sub even higher because the slope of it is not very steep. It's pretty effective at second order, but I really like to have fourth order there. So hopefully they can fix that soon. So here we have, I wanted to show you super sub front on with the main channel set large. The default is the light trace. You can see it's, it's rolling off at 40 Hertz, the little blue trace here. And then the green trace is when I changed the crossover and I had it go to 80 Hertz. So the default is at 40 Hertz. And, and some people might prefer that. They might just say, hey, I wanna have, I have large towers and when I listen to two channel, I just want the bass to kick in at 40 Hertz and below. It'll do that if you leave the crossover off on the front channels and you turn super sub front on. And then I have one more measurement here. And this basically shows you um, full range on the main speakers versus a high pass filter in red. Blue is full range, red is high pass. And then the crossover, um, the reason why you're seeing the elevated levels because I tested both channels at the same time. So you get a, a 60 beat bump as a result. So let's go back to sharing the screen here and into the configuration. So that's how the base management works. It's pretty cool that you've got this variable phase. And I, I really like having this web interface. And the advantage of this web interface is if you don't have the AVR in the same room as your display and speakers, you could basically set this thing up from anywhere in your house as long as you have it on your network. And this is a really clean looking interface. I really like it. Then you got your inputs here. You can relabel them. As you can see, I have input one is APX 585. That's the name of my audio precision test analyzer. You've got seven HDMI inputs. You got three HDMI outputs. One of them's for zone two. Then you got, of course, your legacy um, coax and toss link. And here's just your network information. Of course, mine is set for a wired connection here. So it's very intuitive. Like I didn't pick up any manuals and I just really, I figured out how to use virtually every function here. And then um, I like this too, is you could save your settings for your AVR and you could export those settings or you can import another file. So let's say you um, take the receiver down for whatever reason, get it upgraded when they have the new HDMI board come out. Um, you could basically save your settings, send it back to the factory, have them do their thing. And if for every, whatever reason, if, the, if all those settings were wiped out, you've got a backup, you can re-import all your speaker configurations and whatnot uh, you have on there. So I think that covers most of the basic functions here. Um, why don't you guys give me some comments down below of your experience with Anthem products. I really like all of that flexibility you have in configuring this product. And in the follow-up videos, I'm going to be doing a bench test video next. And then I'm going to be exploring the Anthem Arc Genesis room correction system once I get everything installed. So guys, if you like this video, please thumb it up. Please share it. Make sure you subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or if you just want to chat about, you know, what the greatest products out there are. I'll try my best to answer you based on my knowledge. And also, we really appreciate your support. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.